it's really important to be, yeah, engaged with their business. And similarly, I think, you know, we have clients that in, you know, at times they might not be having the best time, things are going wrong in their business, they're having commercial issues. You know, for us, it's about a partnership. That's why longevity is important. And the benefits of that are being able to stand by them when times get tougher. You're not just like, oh, well, thanks, sorry, you can't pay me anymore, so we're going to just run away. It's like, okay, cool. Well, let's have a look at what we can do whilst you're going through this time. And then we'll, you know, we'll bounce back together. And that's a really, really important aspect of what we try to build for the client experience as well. Welcome back to SEOleverage.com. This is episode 117. My name is Gerd Melak, and today I have a special guest. I'm really happy that you could take some time out of your schedule for us. Stevie Brown, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. It's good to be here, Gerd. It's definitely great to to have you on the show. We got introduced by a common friend, Anthony Chansomuth, who's already been on a guest on the show. So big shout out to Anthony. Absolutely amazing as we just determined as as a yeah. connector of, yep. of worlds, I would say. <laughs> Absolutely. He's phenomenal at connecting people and a fantastic content writer as well. So Absolutely. He definitely is. <laughs> he definitely is. We got to we got to work with him as well at some point and everybody who can should definitely do it. Stevie, you're a marketing strategist. You've got 20 years of experience. Uh, you've worked with some of the biggest names people would recognize like Nestle and L'Oreal and and brands like those in marketing. And now you're specializing in creating outsourced marketing teams, which I found really, really interesting. And we're going to have a lot of questions about it. But you also have a book, The Care Factor Fix. Yes, correct. And I would say, let's jump right in there. What is The sure. Care Factor Fix all about? No worries. Yeah, I'd love to talk about this. So The Care Factor Fix, how to finally get results from marketing is a model that I developed um, when I was actually undertaking my master's in digital marketing. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, you have to do a research study. So um, I was really fascinated because I'd been advising businesses for years before that. And I was finding that a lot of them were saying, well, you know, we tried to work with this marketing service, but it didn't work. The marketing didn't work or the relationship didn't work. And there was this phrase, didn't work. And I was really fascinated. What does that mean? What do you mean it didn't work? In what way did it not work? And so then when I would talk on the converse to marketing providers, they would say, oh, you know, small business clients, you know, they can be an absolute nightmare. They don't understand what we're doing for them, et cetera. And so I wanted to really investigate what was this kind of problem? What was the disconnect between the two sides? And that was where my research took me. So I interviewed um, and did questionnaires with both uh, sides of that, that so sides of the fence, as it were. Mm -hmm. And then I looked at the results and I kind of had a number of revelations that helped me to develop this model called the Care Factor Fix. Mm -hmm. And so CARE stands for commitment, accountability, realism, and engagement. And those four factors of what I've uncovered are really the recipe for a great relationship between a small, medium business and their marketing services provider. And so if I delve in a little bit and just explain what each of those pillars really means um, in, in terms of, yeah, practical terms. So commitment, what we found was that a lot of businesses, they really weren't that committed to the marketing process. So it was as if they sort of thought, well, I think I've got to do some marketing, but I don't really fully understand it. I'm not really prepared to invest in it. And so what would happen is they would sort of dabble in it. You know, they just dip their toes in the water. They sort of have a go and they'd work with a marketing service provider for like a month. And then they go, oh, it didn't work. It didn't work. So I'll stop, <laughs> you know. And um, of course, you know, as you know, <laughs> all too well, it's it's not a magic, you know, it's not a silver bullet. It's not a magic, you know, answer to your business woes. If your business is in need of clients, well, you know, you probably should have started your marketing a lot sooner. Um, you can't expect to just start and do a month's worth of whatever it is and then just expect the, there to be kind of a magic stream of revenue coming through from that. So, what we found was that this lack of commitment was really leading to them just jumping to a conclusion that, you know, marketing doesn't work. And similarly, that can happen on the side of marketing providers as well, right? Because they don't commit to the client. So they're not invested in the business. They don't listen to the client's needs or the objectives. They don't try to align their strategy to the objectives that the client wants to meet. Mm -hmm. So the commitment piece was really about 
having a strategy, agreeing to put a strategy in place and invest in that, and then agreeing to stick to it as well, not just jump around and cha- chop and change all the time mm-hmm. and commit to a budget, a marketing budget for the year that you're going to invest as a business owner that's going to help you to grow your business ultimately. Um, so that was the commitment piece. The accountability piece is also that idea that, you know, a business owner will say, oh, well, you know, we've got a marketing team now, so they can deal with our sales. And it's like, uh-uh, no, but sales is a separate function. So marketing is what's going to, you know, draw the horse to water, as we say, and sales is what's going to make it drink. So it was this idea that, you know, a lot of business owners felt that once they were investing in marketing, therefore they had no responsibility whatsoever for the growth of their business at that point. And, you know, I always talk about businesses is, and I think it came from probably Peter Drucker originally, but correct me if I'm wrong, but, you know, he talked about businesses, two things, it's marketing and it's innovation. That's it. That's all you have to do. Innovate for your needs of your customer and then promote it to them. And so, you know, often what happens is a business will try to get somebody else to deal with the problem of marketing because they see it as a chore or a problem which in itself is a problem, right? Because the (laughs) attitude and the mindset's not there. So they see it as a chore, they shove it off to somebody else. And then, you know, they sort of expect to spend 50 grand and get $3 million worth of business from it. And, you know, it's not going to happen. And so they, they don't actually take accountability for their business. So that's one of the learnings. So, you know, for any business owners listening, you have to be responsible for the development and the growth of your business. So innovating your products and services, and then ultimately, um, you know, once those are promoted, you still have to take those inquiries, those people that have come in and shown an interest and you have to nurture them and you have to drive them through your sales process. So those are the two main ones. And then the realism and the engagement pillar, realism is about being realistic about timeframes and budgets. Um, so, you know, often the expectation um, of what can be done within a time frame, and that happens both ways, you know, both with uh, marketing providers expecting clients to just jump and turn things around like quickly and they they can't necessarily they don't necessarily have that much time to do it so you have to be realistic about the time that your client has available and how to utilize that in the best way for the things you need but the client equally has to be realistic about how much time it takes to deliver marketing mm-hmm. and also the results how long it takes to see and you know if, if you think seo you know is is your domain and it's like well we're not going to just put something, you're not going to do some some SEO and tomorrow, all of a sudden your website's, you know, going to just shoot up the ranks. It takes time, right? It has to seed, whether it's Perfect. content, whether it's, you know, what it, whatever it is. So, um, sorry, you're going to, you were going to comment on that, Gert. No, no, no. I'm just, just nodding. <laughs> that's your, that's your everyday. Oh, right? <laughs> you're like, that's right. I've heard this one before. And so, and then the, final one is the engagement and you know we want clients obviously as marketeers we want clients to be engaged in understanding and learning about what we do but sometimes clients can be engaged to the point that they try to take over or they try to tell marketing providers this is how you should be doing your job and you know obviously people don't respond too well to that so it's (laughs) it's really more about engaging in the right ways so we need you to engage you know as a client we need clients to engage as the subject matter expert that's where they can be super valuable because if we're creating content if we want to get messaging right positioning um if we want to understand more about their industry then them coming to the table as the subject matter expert really helps the marketing to um you know to come to life and then you know and and subsequently you know you you are not going to get a a great result if you're constantly um engaging in the technical aspects of the marketing because you don't need to be doing that as the client you should be getting on with you can you've got all your time freed up now you've got an outsourced marketing team so it's like off you go be free you can now focus on other aspects of your business so that's the really important part but the engagement works both ways and marketing providers need to engage with the client's business and not just provide you know cookie cutter um approaches and be able to tailor things and be flexible about how they tailor it because Clients look for that. They want some level of customization often. Um, and it's important that you can align to their objectives and, and really build them something that's going to work specifically for their business. So that's the that's the overview of the, the four pillars. 
I love I love that. I have I have five stories for every single point of the of the key. Of I'm not surprised because I do. Yeah, that was, I, it, it's scary. interesting. I, I love that you. I love that you interviewed the other side as well. Obviously, as an agency owner, I'm I'm biased here. I've been doing this for 20 years as well. <laughs> um, but it is it is definitely true. Like I I feel very often people think, okay, I'm my business is going well. I don't need marketing. No, my business my numbers are going down. Now let's yeah. let's switch this marketing thing on. Yeah, so my business is going yeah. to grow again, and and it, when it goes well, we switch it off again. So this yeah, is absolutely. this is really something I'm struggling very often in in calls when I try to explain what we're doing here. Why are we actually doing it? So I'm I'm always big on the why with clients and with my team. Yeah, absolutely. And when I, if I if I have the feeling they don't understand why they're doing this, I, I have rejected some some people already. Yeah. Because I feel that we are just not the right fit. Because if people are going to do SEO for three months and then cancel because <laughs> they're not making more sales, we have an issue, right? Then because I think it's then my fault because I didn't make the expectations clear or or the timeframes clear. Yeah. But I absolutely have this this feeling that people just think of marketing like like something you have to do if the business doesn't go well. So obviously you did something wrong. Yeah. So now you switch this marketing on. So so the salespeople yeah. are busy. And then yeah. let's see how fast we can switch it off. I see this with one question very quickly. When people say, after how many months can I turn this off? <laughs> this is the, literally the question I'm getting, right? Uh, yeah. Wow, wow. Yeah, no, I'm not surprised. And, you know, this is the thing. And this is, this, is, this is common, right? This is exactly what I found. A lot of marketing providers, those sorts of stories and, you know, if you're not, and that's the commitment, right? They're not committed to it. They're, and, and what I found is that when you get, a, and, and we all go on our journey as a business owner, right? We, we start at a certain stage. We kind of break through different brick walls as we go. And I tend to think my mountain like a, um, sorry, my business like a mountain. And you're going up the base camps and then you get to a base camp and then you're like, right, what's the next peak we need to hit? And I think, you know, this is the same with with the marketing mindset that people develop as they go through their journey as a business owner. And if your marketing mindset is, oh, well, I'm only going to do marketing when, you know, we are panicked and we don't have enough clients, that's a problem because it's not going to change the world overnight. And then you're just going to be disappointed. And the challenge with that is that then the, the marketing provider gets a bad rap. It's like, oh, well, you know, we tried these marketing people and it didn't work. Um, and it's like, well, hang on a minute, where's your accountability in this? Because it has to be a collaboration and a partnership and it does need longevity to it. And what I found is that when you talk to business owners who are quite established in their business, you know, they have a sense of absolute certainty about the ability for their business to continue no matter what. They know their business is continuing and they have a plan for that. They are looking to the future. They're thinking three years, five years, 10 years ahead. What's their exit strategy? Well, when you talk to business owners that are still quite early on in their journey, where they're at is they're sort of talking about whether they'll have enough revenue next month. Mm -hmm. And when they're talking like that, they're not ready to actually commit to using external providers for their marketing because they're not going to be they're not absolutely certain that their business is going to continue. And so because of that, they're frightened to actually commit the money and commit to doing a strategy and commit to making a partnership. And I think that's a really big challenge. And as marketing industry providers, I think we all have to be aware of this. And if we're getting those red flags in our clients, we actually have to say no to those people because otherwise you're just setting yourself up to fail. It's going to be a nightmare. You're going to hate it. <laughs> They're going to hate it. And you're all going to end up, you know, thinking that it doesn't work at the end of the day. And so, Absolutely. yeah, it's it's really fascinating. But I, I've got a, a bit of an analogy for you about the, you know, turning it on and off thing. I always say to people, marketing's like a bucket of crabs. Your business is a crab. It's at the bottom of the bucket and you've got to get it to the top. So the little pincers are going, do, 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 scramble, scramble, and you get it to the top and then you can't stop doing your little pincers, right? You've got to keep scrambling because if you stop, you're going to fall straight back down to the bottom again. It's so competitive, whether that's SEO, Google ads, social media, everything. You're always competing to stay at the top of the newsfeed or the search, uh, search results, et cetera. So, you know, it's a bucket of crabs. And if you think you can just stop and it, it'll, you know, turn it off again and you don't have to start all over again, well, then you're really mistaken. Right. I love the, I love the grass bucket. I, I usually talk about watering a tree. So you plant a seed, you don't yeah. stop you don't stop watering after a month just because the tree isn't there. 
I right? love it. Yeah, you kind definitely. of you kind of need to trust the process <laughs> for a while and and maybe much yeah. longer than you want because you know yeah. after two months you're, there's still no tree right but you kind of have yeah. have to have faith in the process or at least in in marketing in the person you you work with and the agency you work yeah. with and then kind of keep yeah. watering and even if the tree has yeah. been growing already you just need to continue water it because otherwise it's going to die right I like the I like the grab one it's really funny. <laughs> It's so 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 interesting, really. One one thing we found really on the engagement part as well is when we have here, we are very lucky, I think, because like lucky because we made it. So I think we have a really good retention rate with clients. So clients usually that join us, most of them will stick for years. We have clients that have been renewing month after month without long term agreements for twelve years right now. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I'm, I'm we're really I'm really happy about it. Let's put it this way. But we've also over the years put a lot of effort in into this engagement part, if you want, where we say, hey, yeah. we really, first of all, the onboarding process for us really means quite quite a few calls, quite some time trying to understand the client's business, making sure that we we get a, an understanding where they want to go and what which part SEO, search marketing, yeah. reputation can can play in this. But then also we we have regular check-ins, we have workshop calls with them, etc. We send them video updates every couple of weeks. We have a lot of back and forth, just because yes. by focusing on on the communication, uh, there's just so much value coming across. So we ha- we had one client, for example, which is literally in one of those uh, conversations, build a six-figure business on the side for them, just because we just match their experience in their area, in their local environment, in their industry, with with what we can do from a marketing perspective. Yeah. Whenever I see this client, he thanks me again. And <laughs> this is, was eight yeah. years ago, just because <laughs> it it was it was just it just made sense back then, right? He do- yeah. told me something. I told him, look, I, this is what I can do. Let me try something over the weekend. And on Monday, he was started selling. And this was really yeah. interesting. This doesn't happen all the time. You can't you can't kind of set the stage for it. But it's definitely yeah. not going to happen with agencies that kind of minimize communication to clients as much as possible. Yeah. We see we only have a sales yeah. rep without experience doing everything. Yeah. And then really for us, especially right now, and we saw a big shift when, with AI coming. For me, it's all about knowledge extraction right now. So we are not so worried anymore about how are we going to produce different pieces of content. It's more about how can I extract all the knowledge possible from my client, yes. from their videos, from their podcasts, from the interviews, from their courses, etc., and then put it in the shape and form I need for marketing. So that we have a lot of engagement, really tight um, contact with every single client right now, just to make sure that we really make this happen. Yeah, that's amazing. I mean, it's so important to have the onboarding process, right? Because there's a lot of education as well, isn't there, that you need to really do with clients. Um, mm-hmm. And they want to know that because they want to understand what they're paying for and what you're doing for them. Um, and I've heard lots about agencies that, you know, business owners say, oh, well, you know, we paid them all this money and then we didn't hear from them. You know, they, they sent us the invoice and then we never heard from them again and sort of thing. And it's like, what were they doing? You know, there's no update, there's no reporting, there's nothing. Um, and like you, we've, I mean, we've just redone ours. We've just mapped out our onboarding, our, in fact, our total client experience from when they first see our marketing through to our sales, through to when they come on board, through to year two. Um, Because you're not ever really a client until year two, right? It's when they return that they really become the client. So we've we just gone and mapped that all out and we've changed it again and we've added education. And so now, you know, when our clients on board with us and we always did discovery. So similar to you, we want to always have a really good discovery session. We, you know, we'll do a couple of those or however many we actually need really understand their business because we can do our research. We would do that anyway, but no one knows their business better than that they do. So it's great to just scrape from their brains and try to kind of, um, you know, transfer as much knowledge as possible. And it's, it's really important to be, yeah, engaged with their business. And similarly, I think, you know, we have clients that in, you know, at times they might not be having the best time, things are going wrong in their business, they're having commercial issues. You know, for us, it's about a partnership. That's why longevity is important. And the benefits of that are being able to stand by them when times get tougher. You're not just like, oh, well, thanks. Sorry, you can't pay me anymore. So we're going to just run away. It's like, okay, cool. Well, let's have a look at what we can do whilst you're going through this time. And then we'll, you know, we'll bounce back together. And that's a really, really important aspect of what we try to build for the client experience as well. 
Hundred percent. As an agency, it seems like you become like a trusted advisor, right? I have clients yeah. here that are more yeah. for the. I think they they renew. Some of them renew because they want to talk to me sometimes and get some coaching. <laughs> <laughs> I know, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I feel some of them. Some of them they have a really good SEO process going to just follow the follow the guidelines my team and I set up for them. But they really like this because we they can chat about business once in a while with me, yeah. uh, and about opportunities. Um, but yeah, it's really it's really interesting how this relationship evolves, right? I want to I want to switch a little bit from a client's perspective. So if you if you have a client who who has been doing reasonably well, they they kind of want to grow. They're they're ready uh, to take marketing seriously. They might have been dabbling here and there and got to a certain point with Facebook ads, with some Google ads or whatever. How do you think they should approach this? I mean, there's one big question. I, I understand you're biased. I am biased. But it's in-house <laughs> versus versus outsourced. What is yeah. what is? I have my opinion. I'm going to share afterwards. I'm interested in yours. Yeah. Well, look, yeah. Of course, of course, I'm biased because we we literally do outs. You know, build an outsourced marketing team. That's what we do. But mm -hmm. the reason that we do that is because it's for a very specific niche of client where they are beyond that stage of what we call DIY marketing. They've, like you say, they've been doing a few bits and pieces here and there. But it's probably not very cohesive. There's not an actual marketing strategy that pulls it all together. And also, let's say they're working with, you know, they're working with you on SEO over here, and then they're working with some other agency over here on ads, and you didn't know anything about this agency. So it's all just, you know, nobody's talking to each other. So they're sort of the person in the middle of it all. And actually, they can't really manage all that and run their business as well, right? It's too much. So it just becomes too much. So they're kind of at that point, And, you know, Often they do try to make that decision. So, you know, what should I do? How do I proceed with marketing? Do I bring in a marketing manager into my business? And that means I have to go out. I have to write a job description, a job ad. I have to find a recruiter. I have to interview people, bring them on board. I've got to do contracts, the HR aspects, set KPIs, give them goals. I mean, oh, I'm exhausted just thinking about it, right? And this is the challenge for them because Having done that, and I've seen this happen because I've had clients or prospective clients come and talk to me after they've gone ahead and done this. They've hired somebody, but they couldn't really afford to hire a senior enough person that could actually deliver a strategy and then make all the marketing happen. And so either what there's one of two things that I find happens. One is they get a junior person and they go through all the you know requirements that we just discussed. And then, of course, they've got to pay salary and super and bonuses and buy equipment and insurance and everything else and manage they now have to manage this person so now they've got a person that is not senior enough to actually create a marketing strategy who is looking to them to say what do you want me to do so yes i've got some experience in marketing but what do you actually want me to produce you know and then you end up just managing that person the other way it goes is they hire someone more senior so now they've spent all their budget and they that person says, great, I'll put the strategy together. And then that person says, so what's the marketing budget? Because I need to now go and get all these providers to deliver the marketing. So you've just spent 150K or more on a senior person, and now they want at least another 100K or more to actually go out and deliver the marketing. Or you've spent 80 to 100K, but you are still in the same problem that you had before where you have to manage this person. Mm -hmm. So obviously when you outsource, and especially if you go to an agency, um, or, you know, someone like ourselves where we're going to build a bespoke team and bring in the specialists that are needed to do all of the different jobs that sit in the strategy, you're not going to have any of those challenges. You're just going to hand it over to us and then we're going to be able to take it up. We're going to put the strategy together. We're going to find the right people. We're going to put it all in place. I'm going to manage it all for you. So yes, I'm biased, but for me, it's just a much better way for most um, businesses and actually costs them less overall, I believe, than the methods that I've just described. I love that. I definitely agree with that. I will also, one thing I've also encountered is that people think marketing is one person. Yeah. <laughs> I so should, I, should I hire a secretary or should I not hire a secretary? Should I hire a marketing person <laughs> to do all this marketing stuff? <laughs> Why should I not hire a marketing person? And they were starting, yeah. we had clients, we used to do a lot of lead generation in the past. We're still doing it, but not so much. Um, and people were comparing like our budget 
I think it was like like a retainer, two, three thousand dollars retainer per month or something like this. They were starting to compare our budget with one marketing person, which here in, in Spain, at least back then was was reasonable. They would have been probably winning in their head, hiring somebody full time rather than paying an agency for this. But then I said, yeah, it's, but it's not only one person because we've got one person running the ads, one doing the copy, one doing the design, one doing your website work, which this person should also be doing. And then we are also doing the SEO part where there's a link builder, there's an SEO writer, there's a consultant, there's a strategist. Yes. So you're not looking at one person, right? So suddenly you're looking at yeah. 20,000 instead of 2,000. And yeah. then the equation obviously changes. So we they have this, this feeling like, like it's like you have an IT guy, you have a marketing person. Yeah. This is going yeah. to, to be solving everything. Yeah, 100% agree. And that's the thing. It's it's Yeah, you're right. And I don't actually know that many people who are super multi-talented marketing people that can turn their hand to any marketing function, right? So I'm pretty handy. I can whip out an email marketing campaign. I can build a WordPress website. I can write some content. You know, I can do a lot of the stuff that a mark that this marketing person needs to be able to do. But I'm not a specialist in SEO, for example, right? That's why I have people to do that for us. I'm not an expert in writing content that's optimized. I'm not an expert in Google ads. I know about these things and yeah, sure, I can switch some buttons on, but that doesn't make me an expert in every area. Like I don't know any marketeers that can be an expert in every single aspect of marketing. It's too big, right? There's too much to it. So yeah, 100%, you're absolutely right. That's a really good way of looking at it. I love that. This It's like you... You know, I can hire one person or, hey, you can get access to a global remote team of like 20 people. Which one do you want? You know, 20 experts or just one generalist? I mean, yeah, absolutely. It's really, it's really it's really tough, I think, especially also when you think about hiring. How are they going to judge who to hire, right? There's, they can't even have a conversation, <laughs> right? It's, yeah. yeah, I couldn't I couldn't hire a carpenter tomorrow. I'm into woodworking, but I can't. I couldn't hire a carpenter and judge on their skills. Yes. If it's not, let, let alone somebody from a, a plumber or electrician or, or whatever, we have no idea about their industry. How do you do the hiring, right? Do you just yeah. take the reference and believe everything that's in the curriculum and they have been working with, with such and such brand and now they're already qualified for your particular business? It's really tough. Yeah. I mean, we have yeah. we have been helping clients finding SEO people that would then work with us. So for me, an, an ideal scenario when somebody is at a certain stage is that they have one person doing like a, some sort of CMO or at least part-time CMO like Anthony, for example, does as, as well, yeah. um, where where they would work with us as an agency. So we would have like pretty much in-house or at least they would, they would have like a part-time person responsible for dealing with an agency yes. or with the agencies yeah. involved. So there's like, one, it's not necessarily the business owner who needs to respond to every single email, but there's like one person yeah. who kind of organizes everything. For me, this is like the ideal scenario. I do not believe it makes any sense for for people to have their own marketing team because it's just not going I, I have yet to see an in-house marketing team that's really up to date with what's happening in the industry yeah because yeah, they yeah. usually very not all of them obviously a lot of them yeah. are playing maintenance mode which is okay we just maintain we we know we need to run three campaigns a year so we yeah. still run three campaigns a year we've always done facebook let's still do facebook um, might not have heard about TikTok and, and ads just yet, just because they always do exactly the same thing. Whereas as an agency, it's it's survival mode, right? You can't survive as yeah, an agency yeah. if you're not up to speed. So I, I feel you get like the best of both worlds if you have like a CMO role and and then work with an outside outsourced partner, outsourced marketing team or, yeah. or outsourced agency. Yeah, I think that can be ideal. Um, uh, for businesses that can afford that and they're at that size, I think, you know, having that person that's the representative, um, as long as, you know, I think one of the challenges we've had before is it gets handed to the ops manager um, and that's not the right person to manage yeah. marketing. They don't know anything about marketing. <laughs> so, um, yeah, but I think that can absolutely work um, and that would definitely be an ideal scenario. Just have that one contact so you're not scrambling to get hold of the business owner all the time because they should be busy running their business. <laughs> Absolutely. So if somebody now has is is committed to marketing, they are going to outsource this to to an agency or or someone like you where you build their team. Um, what are like a few first things they should be thinking about? 
So the very first thing that we are going to talk to them about is what's their annual marketing budget, because that's what we're going to use to build their strategy. And, you know, there's a lot of consultants out there, and I used to be one myself where we would say, yeah, we'll do a marketing strategy for you. But that's fine. But the problem with that is that they're not building it to a budget based on specific costings of providers. So, you know, we ask, what's your annual marketing budget? And if you're committed to this process, then that shouldn't be a hard question to answer, right? Because you have a company budget and there's a line item for all sorts of things like your accountant and your insurance and whatever else. And there's a line item for your marketing. And so whatever that line item is, um, you know, you come to us with that. And then at that point, you know, we would look at building a strategy and we would align it to that budget. So they need to be thinking about what their budget is. Um, we usually advise a guidance of seven to 10% um, of their revenue for their marketing budget. Um, and of course, it varies a little bit by the type of business or the industry, you know, whether they have really high costs or product costs or things like that. But generally, that's a good global benchmark that we advise. Um, so once they've determined their budget, um, then they need to also have a think about who's going to be in their business that's going to be involved in the process. So like you say, is there a CMO type role or is there a, a coordinator or someone that's going to be the point con you know the point of contact for it or is it going to be themselves in which case they need to carve out some time and it and it's not a huge amount because we really try to work very hard on making it less time for our um for our business owners we try to make decisions for them so they don't have to be involved so we make the marketing decisions and get them to make the business decisions right. but essentially you know the engagement requires some level of time and effort to be put in and then, you know, if they're looking to kind of decide on providers, they should really be looking for a values alignment. Um, you know, is the provider interested in their business um, and what they do? Do they have a passion for it? Um, don't necessarily have to have experience in their industry because one of the things that we do as marketeers and I certainly love is that we get to learn about a hundred different industries. So we learn so much and there's so much that's transferable. So that can always um, that can always be learnt and and that comes a part of the discovery. So I think the main thing is being is having that check with yourself that you're committed to the process, making sure that you've made way for marketing to happen for your business, and then really confirming your budget and then working out have you actually got your house in order. So once you know you're going to engage someone to do your marketing and they're going to start promoting your business and pushing people to your website, what happens when they get to your website? Have you got your housekeeping in place? Like, is there a way in what I call a way into your business? You know, some people talk about a lead magnet, yeah. but how are they going to engage with you? If you haven't got that in place, we do all that stuff as well for our clients, right? Because they often don't. And we kind of tidy it all up and say, right, we need a lead magnet or we need a consult or whatever. But really think about what's going to happen after you get your leads in, um, you know, inquiries to your business or people on your mailing list. Are you ready to take them? Are you ready to deal with them? Are you have you got a process in place to sell to them or whatever your next step might be? So I think once they know they're kind of like, yeah, we know where marketing is going to fit into our existing infrastructure. Um, and then and we're committed, we're ready to go, we've got clear business objectives, we've got a budget, then it's time to start having a conversation with someone like ourselves or um, you know, a marketing consultancy or, or agency that can take on your marketing. What should, what should people expect in terms of, of results, time frame? I imagine you, all, you also have those conversations. Um, yeah. they, so they're committed and now, now kind of, um, yeah, unwillingly, but they, they, they know they need to do this. They just design this position, this line item, as you say, okay, to, yeah. to, to an agency. There, there must be the question, okay, when, how much am I going to get back? When am I going to see something about this? Yeah. And it's also obviously the, the cost is not only this line item, it's also the internal costs that need to be assigned uh, for mm -hmm. this person that works with an agency or the time that takes mm -hmm. the, the mm -hmm. photo shoots, the website that needs to be built or whatever it is. How do you frame the results people can expect from marketing once they go into it? Yeah, so we, we always talk about um, the fact that it does largely depend on what is put into a strategy and how much budget we're spending and you know scale and all sorts of things like that. Mm -hmm. um, but what we try to talk about is the different types of channels and how they can have, obviously they all have different metrics. So the way we manage that in our business is we have a dashboard that we plug all their, um, like their Google Analytics and their, um, met, whether it's Meta or their LinkedIn, whatever's relevant to what we're doing, their email marketing, we plug it all in and it spits out 
the results and it shows those lives. So we build that for them once they come through the onboarding mm-hmm. process. And then those metrics are explained to them as well through a education and a glossary that says this is what these all mean. But largely speaking, just to kind of, you know, a sort of top line view of that, as we say, if the um, activity is, the objective of the activity is to build awareness, then it's less measurable than if the objective of the activity is to generate immediate leads for your business. So awareness building activity, of course, can also generate immediate leads. It depends what it is. So if you're putting an ad out and they're going to click and, you know, obviously sign up, then that can be an immediate lead. But sometimes that also has a result of just being about presence of their business. And, you know, we know that we're going to send ads out to the world. We're going to get impressions from that. Some people are going to engage. We're going to get reach. And then some people will click. But some of those people that saw the ad but didn't click might click at another stage. So we're going to try to remarket to them and all of those things. So, you know, we talk about the fact that awareness building activity and awareness messaging is a less easy measure, but we'll be measuring it with um, metrics like impressions and reach um, and clicks um, and possibly engagement rate, for example, on social media, where if we're doing direct lead gen activity um, and it's more, um, say, Google ads, for example, um, or actual lead gen through LinkedIn, which is something we we often do as well, then we're measuring it more on number of connections or number of people who filled out a form or asked for a sample or booked a consult, depending on what what's right for each business. So we we very much bespoke talk about the results, but we also talk about things like, um, you know, when it comes to um, building a new website, there, there isn't a result on building the new website other than you got a new website. The result comes from us then being able to build, obviously grow the traffic to the site and also improve it um, for search engines um, through activities like SEO um, and content marketing. Um, And so we talk about it very bespokely with clients because we have to get everybody to understand the nuances. But what we very clearly say to all clients is marketing is not sales. (laughs) Marketing is measured in lots of different ways um, through awareness to engagement to conversion But when we talk about conversion and marketing, we mean taking an action, not necessarily buying a product or buying a service that comes at the next stage. And that's generally how we how we kind of delve into to results. And we do let them know as well that they can't expect overnight results. We we have a 90 day kind of onboarding process with our clients where they're going to have 90 days where we're going to do the the discovery, we're going to do the strategy. We're going to do the housekeeping jobs that need to be done, and then we start promoting their business. So that's why we need to be on a long journey because it's not going to. We're not going to be promoting from week one. We're going to be doing a lot of background work in the initial stages. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. We talk about about it in similar terms, where we say, "Hey, SEO is just now moving forward. Something you do. Yeah, it's not yes. something that's going to go away. Like marketing yeah. should be something from day one." that you do yes. people think okay my business is online i just need a laptop and then i'm then i'm i'm ready for delivery but i don't count on the budget necessary to actually even build up the awareness and get some some yeah. people that are qualified coming to you and then even the sales process mm-hmm. um but definitely yeah to make sure people have this this um idea in mind that this is just something part of what their business is and what they're mm-hmm. part of their business foundation right and the, the way we talk about results very often is it's just trying to to go backwards and say, okay, somebody who who actually turns into a lead probably has seen you somewhere, probably has inquired about yeah. about your business. They probably have seen what comes up on page one when they type in your business name after yeah. they heard about you. They're going yeah. to look at reviews. They're looking going to look at affiliates who want to rank for your brand name. They're going to look at competitors who rank for your brand yeah. name. So might be some reputation work to do it as well. But even going backwards, they might have just inquired something about your industry. They might have wanted to 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 learn which office partitions actually are uh, noise isolation. I have noise isolation, right? So one of those topics that you say that you get to know over the across the yeah. the, the years in marketing, right? Um, so it's it's really interesting to kind of work backwards so they so they understand. Okay, they, I must show this yeah. to a lot of people to find somebody yeah. ready to do this. And once you work backwards, it, it seems to be a little bit clearer. But obviously, there there are results sometimes where we're having like a campaign, a site that already gets some traffic to a particular article that just didn't put a lead magnet yeah. into it, and you put a lead magnet in, yeah. and, and suddenly there are leads coming in, which is great, which is an overnight result, so to speak. Um, mm-hmm. And then you have other things that just take half a year, a year, or maybe more in order to build up, right, based on the budget. 
And But it's not even an overnight result because to get to that point, you had to do learning, right? You had to test, you had to I should, learn. And I should have I should yeah. have made the quotes, yeah. Overnight Just, result, never, there, there are, never an overnight result, <laughs> you know, right? It reminds me of Melanie from Canva. I, I was at a talk with her one time and she said, I'd like to tell you about my overnight success. It took 11 years. And it's like, yes, exactly. Because everyone's sort of like, oh, Canva, yeah, where did that come from? That's, she's like, I've been doing the hard yards in the back, back of my mom's garage, you know, for all this time. And it's the same thing, right? We learn and we evolve. And a lot of marketing, you know, as you know, it's test and learn. You you, you don't, you know, there isn't a black and white answer. It's not straightforward always. So um, I think it's, yeah, that that's the thing that clients have to really understand and I think that business um, marketing providers need to teach. We need to educate people about how it all works as well, because you can't expect to have a you know a client saying, "Oh, well, you know, you didn't get me this result or that result, or you know, we didn't get any sales from this email campaign you sent out." If you haven't explained to them what to expect from that email campaign in the first place, um, we have to be more clear as an industry with prospective clients about what those results are going to look like in time frame. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And that makes it makes a lot of sense. And uh, I was just thinking about one company we were working with here and also like lead generation e-commerce. No, it was e-commerce. It was e-commerce actually. And they had this, the, the, the founder was still in the business. He had, was like 70 years old or something like this, always talking about the times when he went door to door selling with a catalog um, yeah. his, in his hands, right? And and having oh, those definitely. having those people to kind of divide sales from marketing now that are, that have been growing yeah. the business to really good size. Honestly, he did really great work back then. Um, now they okay. Now this is different, and now we just bring people here, but the sale is still yet to be made, and, and there's no conversation. Mm -hmm. There's no no. I give you this one cheaper because I have more margin there, etc. <laughs> Things like those. Mm -hmm, yeah. <laughs> but it was really, really, really fun fun stories. But yeah, definitely, yeah. you you just need to need to keep going. You need to kind of. Have see see this the, the the big tree is not going to come overnight. You need to keep watering yeah, and right. and it it was a small tree at some point. Um, <laughs> and people people tend to forget this, right? You you buy a house and have a big tree in the in the, in the yard, but this was a small tree at some yeah. point, right? Twenty years at ago. At some point, exactly. And it's yeah. it's it's so funny how how people frame this marketing process. Okay. Awesome. Now this is such such good advice. We've heard a lot about about yeah obviously how to how to think about it how to commit to marketing how to make this a really um important part of your business how to how to assign budget for the long run really make sure that you have the resources also internally to actually not only not only start this process but but keep it going i really appreciate how generously you have shared your experience here uh stevie uh there are definitely going to be a lot of people who are going to want to read your book uh the key effect to fix and we're going to link to it on the show notes over at seoleverage.com forward slash podcast. This is episode 117. If somebody wants to reach out to you, wants to have you create their outsourced marketing team, how they can, can they get in touch with you? Yeah, perfect. Thank you. So if they head to our website, which is thechangestarter.com, um, and once you get on the site, um, if you're on the desktop, you can see a little button for um, book consult. If you're on the mobile site, you'll probably have to go into the menu and just um, click on con contact. Um, and you can fill out a form there. You can book a time with me um, and we can have a marketing accelerator session to discuss how we might be able to help you going forward. Um, and I will better say this as well, otherwise AMP will kill me. Um, if you go to um, thechangestarter.com forward slash podcast gift, um, I think that's right. Um, we'll, I'll get you to link it in the bottom anyway, Gert. Um, that is a little page of bonuses and you can actually grab the, the link to the book there. But we also have a quiz on there and it's a great way to determine where you're at in your journey with the care factor fix. Um, so that model of those four pillars, you can actually test those out by answering the questions on that quiz um, and it'll give you a score as to whether you're actually at the stage where you might be ready to discuss um, an outsource marketing team. I love that. Thank you so much, Stevie. It was great to, to chat with you. Definitely going to reach out in the future and we talk about some some more interesting nuances around marketing uh, nerd out a little bit more thank you so much Stevie thanks Kurt thanks for having me